Hey guys, so today I am going to show you how to conduct a regression analysis using Excel. If you haven't already installed the add-ins for Excel, the data analysis and the solver add-ins, you'll need to do that now. And so first what we're going to do is this is the data from case 13.1, Coastal Star Sales. And we have the uh, region of salespeople, their age, experience, previous sales, and current sales. So this is the data that we have. It's for 11 individuals. And so this is a relatively uh, small sample for us to be able to uh, make really strong generalizable um, implications from this data. However, we will use this data to um, conduct a regression analysis and try to understand what type of model could have produced this data that we see here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we'll go to the data analysis uh, tool pack there and we will go to regression. There are a lot of different other uh, types of analysis tools in here, but today we're going to focus on the regression aspect. So you'll click OK. And from here, you'll want to select your Y range. And what we're going to select is the current sales for our Y, because what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to see how experience can predict current sales or the relationship between experience and current sales. So we've selected our Y range. You'll need to select the top row with the label because you can include the label here. So the next thing we will select our X range and we now have that, make sure that it's actually appropriately set there. So this is our X range. Now in another video, I'm going to show you how to include additional X variables. So right now we only have one X and we have one Y. Uh, later on, I'll show you how to include multiple X variables to conduct a multiple regression analysis. So that's why you have to be careful with whenever you're selecting your X range to only select what you plan to use as your X variable. So <clears throat> from there, we will want to include our labels. We will want to include our confidence level here. And we will want to have the uh, output come on a new worksheet. You can select the standardized residuals if you'd like and click OK. From here, we are going to see our summary output. Now, what uh, we have here, just to give you kind of a, a brief overview of some of the statistics that we care about here, we'll first look at the R squared value. And the R squared value, if you're not uh, familiar with the R squared value, is it is the percentage of the response variable variation that is explained by the linear model. So uh, I'll put that definition here for you. And the R squared value is actually calculated by the explained variation divided by the total variation. And I have that included there as well. So our R squared value is always going to be between zero uh, percent and 100 percent and it's good to note that whenever we're looking at the r squared value that zero percent will be the um, where the model explains none of the variability and 100 percent would be that the model explains all the variability in our y value our y set of values, I should say, because it's a, it's a range or a series of values. It's not just one value there. So let's uh, not have that wrapped. So that is your R squared. And that's really important for us to really understand how much variation is being explained in our dependent variable. So the next thing that I want you to understand is really this F statistic here. And this F statistic is going to be the significance of our, uh, our model. So this being at the 0.01 level, this, is our, uh, this would be a p-value here. So it is at the 0.01 uh, 
level, we are going to uh, be able to say that this model is not easily explained by chance alone. That is, our model is not easily attributed to chance. So this model is st statistically significant, which is what we want to see. And the next thing we want to look at is both our intercept and our experience. What we're more concerned about is really the experience, and this is our coefficient. So the way to understand this is if you increased the experience variable, which experience is measured in years in this model, if you increase this by one year, you would have a $110,000 increase in current sales. So experience has a positive and it has a significant relationship with current sales. And this p-value is significant at the 0.01 level. That means that this is not easily explained by chance alone. And so our model <coughs> produced these data. This, this model that we have here produced uh, the data that we actually observe. So to visualize this data, in a better format, we could select the experience and the current sales data, and we could go to our insert tab, and then we could click the scatter plot. And from here, we can actually uh, place a trend line on the graph, and this trend line is actually showing you this is the regression um, model that was fitted to this data. Now, you can actually include the equation on the chart and you can include the r squared value and just so you can easily see that this matches exactly the values that are in our table here so it matches in regards to um, the intercept it matches in regards to our coefficient here for experience and then our r squared value also matches now, another interesting point, and this would be really important if, say, you are the uh, owner of this company and you're looking to uh, hire someone with more experience and you're looking to see, okay, what can someone with more experience potentially bring to, um, <clears throat> bring to the company? And so this model is going to create data uh, and you could use this to forecast. You can use it to forecast backwards and you can use it to forecast forward. So our largest value in experience is 12 years. So say we wanted to have someone with 25 years of experience, we could use our forecasting tool to forecast 15 years forward to see what someone with 25 years of experience could bring to the company. And it looks like that could bring approximately 3 million dollars to the company if you brought in someone with 25 years of experience. Now this isn't necessarily guaranteed. You see that these uh, actual observations are not on the trend line itself. So you're going to have variability here where some are going to be larger, some are going to be smaller. And if we wanted to, we could also back forecast to someone with no experience because our lowest value in our experience variable is one. All we would need to do is put a one here, and that would allow us to back forecast to see, okay, visualize if someone with no experience came into the company, how much sales would they generate? And this might be important if this company was looking to recruit from an undergraduate program. Um, sometimes, of course, maybe you don't have any experience in sales, you have other types of experience, but you don't have sales experience, this would give a, an indication of where you might be if you had zero experience and you went into the company, uh, what the company would expect to see from you. And they might use this as a benchmark, uh, they might use this as kind of like a goal. So there are different ways in which that they could use this data to um, maybe hire somebody at an entry level position or hire somebody who uh, has a lot of experience and what that could provide to the company. So that's it for today's lesson. I have shown you 
how to conduct a regression analysis in Excel, and I've shown you how to visually uh, plot a regression line on a, um, a scatter plot with your data, and how to put your equation and the R squared value in that graph. So if there's any questions, you can email me at kt.manus at ttu.edu. Thanks. Bye-bye.